morning everyone, welcome to another live stream edition here at NZ Aerosports, my name's Chris. I am also Chris. And uh, we've taken a little bit of time out of our busy schedule playing Minesweeper this morning to talk to you a little bit about cross brace canopies. So uh, Stewie's going to fill you in a little bit on those. Um, just before we get into that, I guess just uh, after trouble with a couple of the other ones, I have over, so I have close to 8,000 jumps and I'm currently jumping a prototype 67 which is terrifying and snelly. True that. Um, and I'm on about 2,000 jumps at the moment and currently jumping a few of the prototypes uh, for the Anna and I was mainly jumping JFX2 before that. So we like to think we know what we're talking about. Um, so just a quick history of uh, cross brace and cross brace canopies. Actually PD were the first to do it many years ago. Um, I think it was the Excalibur, I want to say. Uh, I may be wrong, don't quote me on that. Um, and then the concept was refined a little bit by Gyro, um, and to help improve the openings, he came up with a closed centre chamber. Yes, I'm using notes. <laughs> um, and that was first implemented on the Extreme, which is the ancestor of the FX, uh, which is about the time the Velo was around as well, um, the FX that is. And then from there it's gone on to the JFX, the JFX2, and obviously all the way through our, our modern wing. So the, the concept is still there and still the same. Um, moving on to the, the actual structure, like why, why we do it, what the reason for it is. Uh, obviously it increases performance, um, which is a given. That's why you know, when you jump a cross race canopy you need more experience and be a bit more aware. Um, it also makes the wing more stable. Um, it does this by making it more rigid. Uh, you can actually, like the cross bracing is a, is a kind of really refined, tidy way of doing that. You can achieve the same stability and the rigidity by adding more ribs and just a bunch more lines on those ribs. So where we don't have the lines, you could attach them here and it would do the same thing. Um, paragliders actually do this. Paragliders get away with it because they can use a lot thinner line. They don't have to go through the opening shock that um, our parachutes do. So obviously we're going to have thicker line and if we if we were to go down that route we would have a much bulkier canopy, um, a shit ton of lines on it and which is just going to be a lot more drag so in turn reduce the, uh, the actual performance of the canopy. Um, and the packing volume is going to be huge through that as well. Uh, so what uh, the cross bracing does is if you imagine all that external um, reinforcement through the lines, uh, basically the cross bracing is just a way of internalising that and making it really tidy and refining it, reducing drag um, and the packing volume obviously. Um, so it just makes the wing rigid between these two points where there is no line uh, to, to keep the tension on it. So yeah, that's the reason we do, uh, we use a cross brace and that's why it is what it is and that's why we still use that concept right now. And All right, so I guess we should probably show you the inside of a canopy to show you the physical difference. So I've got hanging up here this Crossfire 3 109 and here we've got the JFX2 109. Uh, so similar size canopies. Coming a little closer. So what Chris was on about earlier, um, uh, having the opening for the nose, as you can see inside there we've got our main seam and then our non-loaded rib in the middle, then our next main seam. See how there's a nice wide open chamber going all the way back inside the canopy there. Might be a little bit blurry. Um, so yeah, so that's a canopy without cross bracing. Um, so if we come on over here to JFX2, okay, again we've got the two main seams there. But as you can see, we've actually got two non-loaded rips running through the middle. That's what these two seams are here. And then what Chris was talking about earlier, having the closed uh, cell on the, on the center, um, that also helps with the openings. Um, if that was wide open, uh, the openings tend to get a little bit messy. So that's where we're closing off the nose. And the actual cross brace itself, where we had a, an empty cell on that side, you can see here we've actually got that extra rib, which is cross bracing. So what that's actually do is goes from the main seam to the upper main seam on the opposite side. So what that actually does, what reason it gets its name cross brace is because it actually goes diagonally straight across the cell. So yeah. Um, so moving on from that uh, would be wing loading. The wing loading recommendations and uh, yes. Yeah, so I guess um, we do a lot of jumps, obviously, when we're testing these canopies, and we do give a recommended wing loading on the website. There's a chart you can go have a look. It will give you a 
minimum wing loading and a maximum suggested wing loading. Um, and what they basically are is that's where we found that we get the best performance from the canopy. Anything lighter than that, um, sometimes we can have issues with openings. Uh, and similarly, if you go on the higher end of the wing loadings, again, the, the openings start to uh, become a little less consistent. They can be harder, potentially, uh, not as good as we want them to be so that's why we put the maximum on there um, also on the higher end of the wing loading you're instead of getting the good glide performance you actually just start sinking out of the sky um, so we actually put those numbers on um, just to have that range of the best performance um, sometimes you can get away with slightly either side of that but we found that those numbers actually work best for that canopy type yeah yeah for sure like they that recommendations you can go outside of them but obviously that's outside our recommendations, so that's kind of on you. Um, obviously in high performance canopy piloting um, and com competing, which I do a lot of, uh, we do load our small cross brace canopies very high, but again, because it's cross brace, the wing is now, it's, it's more stable, it's um, more rigid, and it's gonna get more, uh, good performance. We can get away with doing that. Um, in terms of experience level on a cross brace canopy, obviously there's a reason that we don't make cross brace canopies for the beginner. It's, it's not a beginner wing, the technology, like the, the performance you get out of the wing uh, is higher, which is not going to be ideal for the first time jumper. So that's why obviously we recommend, I think we have for the JFX2, uh, and this is assuming that you're current, because you could do 800 jumps over 10 years, which means obviously a cross brace canopy isn't for you. Um, but if you're a current jumper, um, then around, once you get over the 800 jump mark, is when we would start thinking about looking at a bigger cross brace canopy. Um, me personally, I think I was about that, and then I didn't really downsize from my first wing, uh, my first cross brace wing, to get onto something a bit higher loaded and faster until uh, well over a thousand jumps. Um, so, obviously, with with these wings being smaller, they're more sensitive. Uh, they react a lot quicker. When everything's going good on the wing, it's it's really it does a lot of the work for you. It's a it's you know that's why the the technology is so advanced. It's really nice to fly. Uh, it's when things go wrong. When that little canopy or that cross brace canopy that's more sensitive twists up on you, that's when you really like you need the experience to know what the what the hell you're going to do to save your life because things can happen quick. And I have had uh, a little bit of tunnel vision and been close to blacking out a couple of times on some malfunctions, so it can be pretty terrifying. You know, it's good to remember that. Um, yeah, I guess in terms of getting onto one and jumping a cross brace canopy, uh, it's really you're going to. Just because you hit 800 jumps doesn't mean you do it. Like you wouldn't just go, now I've got 800, I'm going to change from my Crossfire 119 or whatever you're straight on, into it. straight onto my JFX2 like 99 or 109 or whatever. Um, so for sure, when you progress, you need to think very carefully about what you're doing and being aware. Like it's it's like the race cars of the sky. These are these are designed to be quick and respond really nice. Uh, I was going to say one thing I'd probably add to that. Um, just when you're going through the process of deciding, maybe is it for you? Isn't it for you? It's always good to get some coaching, get some advice from some more uh, highly experienced canopy pilots because although you may think that you're ready, um, other people around you may have watched your landings. Uh, for instance, they may have some tips on maybe improving it, getting better um, and just coaching you through the process of getting that um, uh, higher performing canopy. Uh, another good thing to remember is, and, and this goes with any downsizing of canopies or switching to cross braces, the current canopy that you're on, have you absolutely learned everything that you can on that wing? Um, for instance, um, anyone can, well, let's say anyone, anyone's got a good chance of landing any canopy right out in a nice freshly mowed paddock um, on light wing condition days. But just think about those times that you've got to put it down in somebody's back garden, you get a bit of a crappy spot. Um, I don't know. Me personally, I've been on a tracking jump uh, over in Sebastian, ended up uh, a little bit further away from the drop zone than I wanted to be, um, and ended up having to put it right down in this teeny tiny uh, bit of grass next to a tennis court. Any of you that jumped there, you know exactly where it is. Um, so yeah, once I landed my canopy in there, I kind of knew that I was definitely good on that canopy. So just think about where you're actually going to have to put it, should you need to. Yeah, for sure. Just jump it if you're, you're happy to land it anywhere, more or less. Um, that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you've learned something. I hope we've managed to teach you something about the, what the difference is. Um, it's really not as uh, sort of hard to understand as you think. It's just really, it's quite simple. 
but it works really well. It's a tidy, refined way of just getting more performance and improving the wing. So yeah, that's pretty much it, I think. That's it. I guess uh, we should probably get back to Minesweeper. I'm going to Minesweeper. Catch you guys later. Ciao.